really great to have uh, Etienne Dylocker join us from, uh, you're in Germany today, right? I know you just That said, is correct, so. yes. Okay, correct. so it's pretty late in the evening, but uh, VV8 is one of the leading uh, 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 vector database uh, platforms. You can spin it up in a container and have your vector queries go to it. It's very popularly used. Delighted to have him. Etienne, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jiganesh, and thank you for, for having me again. Glad to be, be here again. Um, this is this is a slide that I copy pasted from our sales deck, but I'm going to skip right over this. The the point here is really um, VV8 is used by a lot of companies, which is which is kind of cool. Um, but I want to spend the the ten minutes that I have. I want to spend mostly talking about architecture, and to talk about architecture, I think I want to set the scene a bit to tell you sort of why why people use VV8 in the first place. And um, from what I what I just saw from the the uh, remainder of the lecture that Jignesh just gave, it actually fits fits in quite well. It seems you just talked about fuzzy matching. Um, so commonly we see um, semantic search as one of the the sort of fuzzy search. So in e-commerce, for example, if you have a very very sort of approximate description of what someone is looking for that can give you better results than if you just have an exact keyword matching. We see a lot of retrieval augmented generation or short rags. So this is this typical ask AI. So for example, if you if you want um, to ask an LLM about your emails, like if there's something in your emails, then it can basically use those emails to ground its answer rather than just hallucinating. And then the third one that's that's becoming a lot more um, relevant lately is agents. And I have something on this um, for, at, at the end of my my slides, where the idea is that you can use VV8 either sort of as a building block to to use as the backend for your agents, or you could use one of the three out of the box agents that we're shipping, which is new. That I'll, I'll get to that. Um, but first, from a uh, more sort of database centric perspective, um, these are a couple of the the features that I want to highlight. Um, it starts with just object and vector storage, so it may be kind of obvious, but the idea is. Um, if you perform such a vector search in VV8, you get the whole data object, the whole document back, not just an ID, and then you have to use a secondary system, but you get it all back end to end. You can combine this with basically any filter that you know from, from any other database. So this could be an exact matching filter like equal or not equal. This could be a range filter. So for example, in e-commerce, a, a price range. And this can even be a highly selective filter, which I'll get to on uh, in, a, in a moment. Uh, that's something that's very specific to, to vector search. Um, you can then do something that we call hybrid search. So the idea is you can basically combine quote unquote traditional search, so BM25 based search uh, with vector based search, mix up the results uh, using reciprocal rank fusion, and then you get better results than if, if you had only used one of the two. Uh, VV8 is very highly updatable, so you can use this with fresh data that constantly changes. Um, so we have one use case where we have 150 million uh, vector updates in a in a single day in a cluster, which may not be a lot for a normal database or for a non-vector database. But if you constantly have to to update these indexes like IVF or HNSW that that uh, Jignes just showed, there's a lot of build cost involved, and um, it's actually quite a challenge to do that at scale. Speaking of scale, VV8, um, you can replicate your data, you can chart your data, you can offload some data to cloud storage and sort of um, give some, some cost performance trade-offs that way. And from a performance perspective, there's there's lots of optimizations, both on an algorithmic level, there's SIMD optimizations, those distance calculations, they they parallelize really well using, using SIMD, and there's, there's dedicated indexes too, which I'll show you in a second. For the first part in the architecture, the object store, it's a custom built LSM store, so lock structured merge tree. And um, it has all the typical traits that you would expect from, a, from an LSM tree. So there's some sort of a memory structure that you write into that's periodically flushed. Um, there's also write a headlock to make sure that if it crashes before the, the mem table would be flushed, um, that your data would be persistent. And then over time, all these individual segments, they get compacted. and um, the standard compaction strategy is a leveled compaction strategy. So you could think of like two segments of level one can be combined into a segment of level two. And then if you have two of level two, they could again be combined in a, into a segment of level three. If you've ever played the game uh, 2048, it's kind of exactly the same same process. That's a perfect mm -hmm. example of, of how uh, leveled compaction works. Uh, but then one of the problems of leveled compaction is if you have a lot of deletes, it, the data will only be freed up once the compaction actually occurs. So it can take a lot 
sort of given this this leveling, it can take a lot of time until the root segment basically gets compacted. So what we added is an in-place compaction strategy where basically you go through a segment and you just remove something. If you know that it's going to be overwritten or deleted in the future, you can already sort of compact this segment in place rather than by combining it with, with something else. And that's one of the, the optimizations that we made um, sp on, on yeah, specific VV8 use cases that we've seen. <laughs> And then on um, speaking about filtered search, um, for, for our filters, we're using an inverted index. And the idea is that this index is bitmap based. It actually uses roaring bitmaps, which is kind of a nice hybrid for both dense and sparse bitmaps without, without sort of exploding. Because of course, a regular bitmap, if you have bit zero set and then bit one billion, then the rest is just zeros that you still have to pay for. And the roaring bitmap kind of, kind of tries to condense that a bit. Um, but the cool thing here is that this is integrated into our LSM store. So we're not just using a generic LSM store and just putting a bitmap into it, but the LSM store itself is actually aware that what it has, that what segments are, are bitmaps. So you can see this example at the, the, the bottom of the site. Um, if you have one segment um, that adds a couple of, of posting lists and then the next segment uh, that adds a couple new ones, but also deletes one, then what we can do in a compaction is actually apply the result. Like we can remove the redundancy in a compaction just as you would in a normal compaction, um, but basically for the individual bitmaps, which um, which makes the compactions more efficient. And then the implementation is also built in a way, uh, zero copy, zero initialization to just be very fast, which means even if you have, um, have to retrieve bitmaps that have millions of IDs, this still stays uh, very efficient. A traditional Inverted index, however, breaks the moment that you have a range. So if you think of in the inverted index, of course, every every entry, basically every value entry is one row, right? So um, if you have one item or if you have multiple items that, are, that cost $5, they're all in that row. And if you have some that cost $500, they're all in that row. But what about all the prices in between? You would essentially have one row per price value. And that A is a lot of storage, but B also becomes really hard if you want to retrieve this because now you essentially have to merge the results for all these rows, which could be possibly any, any kind of value. So what we're using here is the idea of a bit sliced index, which kind of turns this whole, this whole bitmap sort of on its, on its, on its side. And um, rather than in, uh, indexing the values, we're actually indexing the individual bits. And that's kind of a trade-off now to get any result from that index, you actually need to match 64 bitmaps, assuming a uh, float 64 or an in 64, um, which kind of gives you a, a minimum cost, but it's also at the same time, the maximum cost. You never have to merge more than 64 bitmaps to get an arbitrary number of values in a, in a range. Um, this concept is also in, in, in Apache Pino, for example. Um, so shout out to our friends from both StarTree and FeatureBase both cool database products that have um, blog posts specifically about this topic. So if you're interested in it, I can absolutely recommend them. Uh, the last index before I get to the vector parts is the BM25 index that we use for hybrid search. So BM25, for those of you who are not aware, is um, essentially the, the state-of-the-art keyword um, uh, scoring algorithm. And before there was vector search, that was the way that you would do search. So it essentially um, sort of boosts words that are rare and then devalues words that are super common. So stop words such as the, a, et cetera. And uh, in WeV8, we use this mainly to aid vector search. Vector search is not perfect. And turns out if you have vector search on the one end, it gives you, let's say, 80% accuracy. And you have BM25 search on the other hand, it also gives you 80% accuracy. The results are not the same. And if you merge them, you can actually get to something like 90% accuracy. And that's exactly the idea of hybrid search, sort of get the best of, of both worlds. But this is a fully disk-based inverted index, again, sort of built as a variation of that same LSM store. Big news here in... Um, in our upcoming release, I think it's only a week away or so at this point, uh, we've completely rewritten the internals of this. This is now using BlockMax Wand, which is kind of an algorithm that um, tries to avoid scoring points that can no longer contribute. So it's essentially just, just pruning. Um, and BlockMax is, is a lot more efficient because it can skip entire blocks, which essentially means you don't have to, to read them from disk at all. You don't have to initialize any memory. And um, in turn, also, we use this to not just use a better algorithm, but also create a better implementation um, using zero copy and all the other learnings that we did from, from other sides, which gave us a total of a 5 to 10x um, performance improvement, which is pretty cool. 
That finally brings me to the um, vector index part. So HNSW, um, Jignesh has mentioned it, it's the most common vector index that we, we typically use. It's typically state of the art or a variation of it. You combine it with, with uh, you could combine it with various quantization methods, for example, to either make it cheaper um, or to make it faster. And uh, Weavey's implementation here slightly differs from the reference paper in two aspects. One is we support a large number of deletes and updates without degrading uh, quality or latency, which is something that you don't find in the, in the uh, paper, but also in place filtering. And this is um, the, the, select, uh, the highly selective filters that I teased in the beginning. So this is, uh, the idea is in that kind of graph, if you have this kind of correlation, like it's shown in this in this picture here, where you would search for a fuzzy search on gold ring, but then you would set a price filter for less than ten dollars, that's kind of you can immediately tell like that's that that's not going to work, right? Like all the gold rings are probably going to be a lot more expensive, and this is in just standard HNSW. This is a big problem because either you lose the connectivity or you keep the connectivity, but you keep scoring points that are never allowed by your filter. So what we're doing in in uh, this scenario is we're using using Acorn, and again here also it's a a, a variation of Acorn um, to solve that that problem. Are we, are we out of out of time? You can take okay. thirty seconds. Okay, thirty seconds. enough. That's perfect for for these three agents out of the box. They're coming in in March. We're calling this the Wave Stack. The idea is the Weaviate agents and vector embedding stack. And we're releasing three types of those agents, the query agent, the transformation agent, and the personalization agent. And the idea is with the query agent, it's really just an expert of Weaviate's API. So you can basically use natural language to query the database. The transformation agent is basically like rack, but writing data. So with a single prompt, you could transform your entire database. You could do something like, take everything in the database and translate it to Spanish and write it back into the database. And then the personalization agent is the idea um, of, yeah, using learning basically from user behavior to really customize it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope it was still in time. Um, here's some links if you want to find out more. And of course, I'm, I'm also happy to answer all your questions. Thank you.